Welcome back to Enjoy Beekeeping. Today, I wanna to talk to you a little bit about my observation beehive that you see behind me. If you're a regular subscriber on my channel, you, you probably remember that this is a colony that was actually a cutout. There was a, uh, a person that lived about two hours north of me up in uh, Blairsville, Blue Ridge area. That's way up north Georgia on the North Carolina border. And he had a cabin up there and the bees got inside the wall. And a friend of a friend called me and I did the removal. And so the bees have been with me since the 4th of July of 2020. And so in July, we're in the middle of a dearth here in my part of the country. So it's not a real good time to start up a new colony. So they've always been kind of small, but as you can see, they're doing really quite well for a small colony and I have real high expectations for them. And what's really cool about having an observation beehive is it's kind of like having your own little crystal ball. You can tell what's going on out in bee world without having to open up a beehive. And you can see exactly what's taking place in the bee yard based on what you see happening inside of just one hive. So let's take a look inside and I'll show you some examples of what we're seeing. So back in January and early February, the bees were just in a tight little cluster. All they were trying to do was just ride it out, just survive the cold temperatures, conserve as much honey as they can. And then as soon as we started getting those warm temperature days, the queen made an appearance. I saw her walking on one of the outside frames and sure enough, they started rearing brood and they were bringing pollen in, in mid February. So that's pretty exciting. And as a result now, they've been rearing brood and their quantity just by visual inspection is, looks like it's almost doubled. So today's March 12th, and you can see that in just a short time, in about 30 days or just a little under, you can see the amount of bees has grown exponentially. And if you look and see what we're, we're seeing, a lot of capped brood that's ready to hatch. And brood is a lot like toast. When you put bread into a toaster, it's very light color. And right before it pops, it's dark brown. And that's what we see here. We see dark brown capped brood which means they're about to pop out more workers. And that's what's gonna happen within the next day or two. We're gonna see more and more worker bees. And as that workforce increase, you're gonna start seeing things like what we're observing here is you can see the bees are becoming active on more of the frames. And they're even building new wax. So they're building new wax comb along this side of the beehive and they're gonna to continue to grow and expand. And what's also really good as far as an indicator as to what's taking place out in the, the main bee yard is the fact that now we see capped drone brood. And if you look here in the upper right corner, you can see that there's some large cappings. Those are the drones. So when drones appear, that means that they're ready for a reproductive cycle of some sort. Now this colony is too small to be casting a swarm. I would be blown away if this colony for some reason decided it wanted to swarm. Right now their main goal is just to build up their numbers because they were just kind of hanging on there a little bit, almost dwindled down to maybe a, a one or two coffee cups worth of bees, not very many. So you need to have large numbers of bees in order to have a really robust colony. So they know that and so that's what they're working on right now. But here's the thing, the reason why they're raising drones is because they always want to be prepared. If anything were to happen to their queen, if she got hurt somehow, usually that's a beekeeper going into a beehive and moving things around, that's sometimes how that happens. So when that does happen, the worker bees will sense that she's injured and they'll replace her. Sometimes the queen just isn't laying enough eggs and again they'll replace her and the only way that they can replace her is if they've got drones so in order to reproduce a new queen uh, they'll make the queen lay eggs and they'll create queen cells those would be supersedure cells if they didn't like the queen so what they'll do is when those supersedure cells hatch 
They've got drones now that can mate with those virgin queens. So the bees are always preparing for the cycles. And so this is the reproductive cycle and they'll be ready either way, whether they need to swarm, which in this case, I highly doubt this colony is gonna swarm. There's really no good reason why they would. So if anything, they just wanna have the drones on hand because bees don't like to gamble. They don't wanna take any kind of chance that if something were to go wrong, they wanna have the resources available right at their fingertips in order to take care of it. So that's what we're seeing here. As a beekeeper, now that we've got a window into the world of the bees by watching what's going on inside the observation beehive, we can also uh, tell just by looking at all the blooms that are coming in right now. We've got uh, fields just filled with henbit and buckwheat and we've got all kinds of daffodils blooming. Uh, the Bradford pears are even starting to put out blossoms right now. And so what we've been doing here at the Enjoy Beekeeping Farm is we've been putting up swarm traps and we can see, uh, I'll just show you, here's a clip of uh, one of my students and uh, I've been teaching him the ropes on uh, beekeeping and how to catch wild swarms. So here he is putting up one of the swarm traps and we've, we've been putting them in different areas. We have almost 20 traps up right now. And typically you'll get about a 50-50 ratio. So if you put up 10 traps, you should get about five wild swarms. So I'm hoping that the odds might even be a little bit better than that this year. We'll have to wait and see. One of the things that is a little upsetting about my particular area is there's a lot of growth. So that means they are just taking down uh, trees all over the place. And I'm a little concerned that some of those trees were housing some of the local wild swarms. And so they're just taking these things down all over the place and putting up subdivisions. So I'm not particularly crazy about seeing that sort of thing happen. Um, so we're gonna have to just see what kind of swarm activity we get. The good news is that we've had some swarm traps hung up at some of our friends' homes and they've shown me some uh, pictures and text messages of scout activity. And here's what scouting looks like. Um, this is one of our swarm traps that we've got hung up at one of our friend's house. And I've just asked her if she could keep an eye on it and let me know if you see any bees. Well, sure enough, she called me the other day and she says, you know what? I'm not 100% sure what a honeybee looks like, but I see some real tiny bees flying around. Well, they were the honeybees. And I went over there for myself just to do a quick visual. And sure enough, um, this tree is actually hanging on a tulip poplar tree. And it's about maybe six feet off the ground, if that. It might only be like five feet off the ground right to the bottom. But you can see all the scout bees are checking it out. And you can always tell they're scouts because it's not a regular in and out like they own the place. You can always tell bees once they've established their colony, they go in and out that front door just like they own the place. And that's exactly why, because they do own it. And you can see a scout bee as they approach the entrance, they kind of make a little circular pattern and they're kind of like looking, is anybody home? Is anyone in there? And then they'll fly in. That's scout activity. So if you were to watch scouts closely, you can see them kind of circle around just to check it out before they actually go inside. Now those scouts, they're out foraging for their parent colonies, but they're also scouting new locations. And so that means that their colony is probably strong enough that they're thinking about casting a swarm. And if, you're, uh, if you wanna dial into that swarm activity, you can almost bet on it that bees will cast a swarm either right after a thunderstorm or after a two or three rain, rainy day period. So I like to keep my weather app handy and I always check it. And if you look at the weather app for my area, you can see we've had some real nice days and now we've got about a two or three day period where it's gonna rain. So I'm almost banking on sometime shortly after that rain gets out of the area that those uh, swarm traps that had the scouts we might just have a swarm take one of those. So I'm, I'm kind of anxious about that. And when it happens, it's really cool. So it's the, one of the most exciting parts about keeping bees is capturing a wild swarm. 
I just love watching the activity that's going on inside the observation beehive. For example, one of the things I really enjoy watching is the bees doing the waggle dance because it's the bees communicating to the rest of the colony where the good nectar is or where the good pollen is. And you can watch this one particular bee, you probably notice this one walking with the yellow, light yellow pollen on her pollen sacs that she's showing the other bees a sample of what she found. And so basically what she's saying is, look at this amazing pollen that I got. This is how much I was able to bring in just one haul. Here's where it is. And that's exactly what's going on in this little video clip that you see here. And you can see that she's very excited about this location and she's demonstrating to all the rest of the bees where to find it. So it's just really cool to observe this in action. And um, if you're thinking about building an observation beehive, I've, I'm starting up an educational channel on uh, another platform. And so if you really wanna get into this hardcore, I guess this, <laughs> that's where I'm at, I guess, is I've gone hardcore into beekeeping. So if the bee fever has really taken you and you really wanna get more out of this experience, um, I'll invite you to my Learn Beekeeping Online uh, dot com website. So that's learnbeekeepingonline.com. You can watch my free introductory video to natural beekeeping. I just basically explain what it means to be a, a natural beekeeper. Plus there's some other things in there that maybe you didn't know. A little bit of bee trivia and it's about 45 minutes long. You're welcome to check it out anytime you want. It's absolutely free. If you want more, um, there's the whole course on there and very shortly I plan on announcing the school dates here at the farm. That would be day two of my beekeeping workshop. So I'm calling it the Great North Georgia Beekeeping Experience because that's what I want it to be for you. I want it to be really, really cool, fun, and enjoyable. Day one is just all the classroom stuff. You can get that online at learnbeekeepingonline.com. Check that website out. And if you want to come here to the farm and see my observation hive getting bigger and bigger every time we look at it and check out some of the bees out in the yard and learn how to handle bees without being freaked out, that's what I try to help people do is just to really immerse and enjoy beekeeping. So until next time, friends, I hope you continue to enjoy beekeeping. If spring hasn't sprung in your area, trust me, it's coming soon because if it's happening here, it's right around the corner for you. So until next time, friends, enjoy beekeeping. We'll see you at the next video.